Hi guys, Sam here. So today I'm just doing an upgrade on a MacBook Pro late 2011. We're upgrading the stock 500 GB hard drive with a Crucial M500 solid state drive. We decided to go with the Crucial M5800 drive because this one has a lot of good reviews and seems to have the least amount of issues with the MacBook Pros. So this is a standard MacBook Pro, it's not the one of the new ones that uses the flash SSDs or even the PCIe SSDs. So we're just putting a 2.5 inch drive in here. Because I don't have my stand, I'm not able to make a video of how to open the MacBook Pro. But all you need to do is just make sure that you get all the screws around here. You know, get a nice white piece of paper like such. Put all the screws in one place so this way you don't lose them because you need each of the screws to put it back. Next thing what you want to do is there are two brackets like this one over here that are there to hold the drive down. So you just need to take off the one that's on the inner side. You could leave this one as is on, on its place because you can just pull the drive out. Next thing what you do is once you have the drive unplugged, you need to remove these silver silver screws. Um, they require the Pentelope screwdriver. However, if you do not have one, that's okay because you can just use a plier like how I did right here. Like this one, just grip tightly and then just remove the uh, four screws because they're required to hold the drive in place. Otherwise it will just bounce around and you don't want to do that. Crucial now gives you this as well in case you need it because you feel like there's too much space between the drive and the enclosure. You can just uh, put this bracket onto the drive just to make it as kind of use it as a filler. And I think that's about it. Yeah, that's all that comes in the box with the with the M500. Now I also picked up one of these Nexstar TX uh, hard drive enclosures for the 2.5 inch regular hard drive that we have here. This way we don't have to throw it out or leave it as waste. We can actually use it as an external. This is a USB 2.0. And it's less than $10, you could get it either on eBay, um, Tiger Direct, or even at Canada Computers in Canada, or many other stores, you could check it out. So $10 or less, you could get one of these and turn the internal, original hard drive into an external one. So again, this is a mid 2011, or sorry, late 2011 MacBook Pro 15. So this is all I have right now. Once I finish putting the hard drive back together or and uh, installing in the laptop, I will continue making the video and we'll add the other part to it soon. So again, you need to remove all the screws on the silver, on the, sorry, the back plate of the MacBook Pro 15. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, three screws are the long ones. The other seven are small. For those, you just need a Phillips screwdriver. Any will do pretty much. And once you got that, those screws out, you need the Phillips screwdriver again to get this bracket out. Then just take off the cable from the hard drive and remove it. And again, then you need these silver uh, screws from the side of the drive. Take them out with the Pentelope screwdriver or use a plier like such. But just apply a little bit more pressure. They don't bend or anything, so you don't have to worry about that. Take them off, put them on, to the, transfer them to the new drive, and then we can reassemble the new drive back in. So we'll be right back. All right, so the drive is, is in place. This is the, uh, again, the Crucial M500 480 gigabyte SSD. So we have installed the drive here. It's in place. I decided to use the bracket just to make things more level because this drive is a little bit thinner. Um, it'll just basically provide some sort of protection at least um, in case of bending or any kind of force applied to just this end of the uh, laptop on the enclosure. So I just attached it. I mean, it doesn't, you know, take anything away from us putting it on. Uh, you could leave it. The drive's not going to go anywhere. It's perfectly secure in its place. So now I'm going to put the uh, bottom enclosure back on and then begin the process. I will also show you guys how to install OS X from a USB drive. I've got an 8 gig USB drive here that I put together. So this way we can just boot uh, from the USB drive and do a fresh install of OS X Yosemite onto this MacBook Pro 15 2011 late model. Okay, so uh, that's about it for now. So I'll be right back once the laptop is fully assembled and powered on. Okay, so I'm done assembling the laptop back to with all the screws inside. Now, I just wanna talk about why I got this enclosure. So this laptop's original hard drive has mountain lion on it. So if we do a migration or do a time machine backup and then try to restore, 
it would give us issues because it will not be able to do a time restore because the uh, mountain line is too old and the Yosemite that I'm about to install on this laptop is too new. So what I'm going to do is do, use the migration assistant and actually just transfer the files over from the old uh, mountain line onto the Yosemite so this way we don't have any problems and then start using this, this hard drive as a backup time machine hard drive and just start doing backups onto that. So I'll be back. Um, again, I got this USB drive here that has OSX Yosemite installer on it. So this way it's easier for us to do the fresh install and by booting it up from here. Okay. All right, guys. So we are done updating the or installing the crucial M500 482 gigabyte hard SSD into this late 2011 MacBook Pro 15 inch. So as you can see right here, this is the MacBook Pro storage. Um, I have the external hard drive right here, the original 500 gigabytes of uh, regular hard drive from Apple. I have it plugged into this Nexstar TX enclosure and I have the both cables um, plugged in because it would not boot just, just, boot just one cable that kept on just ejecting itself because it needed more power. So I plugged both the USBs in and now it is appearing right here as you can see on my desktop. We got the external right here. I'm just gonna quickly go through this because it was almost full. So we're gonna you know, just delete some things that we don't need before we migrate rest of the important files onto the SSD. Uh, one of the things I wanted to highlight was that if you want, because the SSD does not require uh, the shock sensor to be enabled. So you can do this command right here, sudo pm set dash a sms zero, just to turn off the shock sensor because Again, the SSD does not have any moving parts, so you do not need the sensor on, and as, the, as I think it would just cause problems, uh, being on and trying to stop um, the SSD from failing when the computer feels like it's falling. Because again, the SSD does not have any moving parts, so the shock sensor is not required to be enabled on SSDs. So there you guys have it. We did a full install from uh, basically removing the original hard drive, installing the Crucial M500, and we got it working right here and then soon we're gonna do the migration assistant so this is about it today guys uh, this is a very straightforward process anybody can do it at home uh, just follow through the, with the video you know watch everything that we have done and then just um, install the latest OS X Yosemite onto the drive now if you did the uh, Wi-Fi um, download process then what would happen is it would download the original software that or the original version of OS X that came with your laptop rather than the latest that's why i use the usb um, that i made earlier to install yosemite on here rather than going through lion and then upgrading to yosemite which is creates more work because we're doing a fresh install either way on this new hard drive or the new ssd uh, it was just best that we went ahead and did the um, install with yosemite instead just to save time and now we'll just migrate the files over. So if you guys have any questions, just shoot me a comment in the comment section below. So thanks for watching my video. Please check out my other videos as well. I do have a lot of videos on the channel. And again, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Please rate, comment, and subscribe as well as share my video on any social media such as Facebook, Twitter, and do follow me on Twitter as well at Unlock with Sam. And we do provide unlock services as well for cell phones, including iPhones. So again, if you need those services, please visit our website samunlocks.net. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.